So do you find that, like, with those effects that you, you've got your stock things you go to all the time, mm -hmm. or do you still get into them and tweak and find different things? I, I really kind of don't. Yeah, um, right? There, I mean, there are certain things, like I think on this one, what did I do? You know, I'll mess around with things like that. Yeah, um, if you find like a weirdo thing like that, you might be able to, yeah, you might run into the scenario where it's like, oh, that's what I need. Yeah, because what if I do, what if I do this? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that kind of stuff, but that happens on the fly where it's like I, I'm in a session and I need a sound. Sure. But for the most part, you know, this this thing is really that's pretty much that's pretty much my world. Like Yeah. Just those two delays and then I can turn on. That's pretty much where I live. Right. You know, at the end of the day. But as a pro player that, you know, it's like guitar players are in a service industry. So yeah, right. if, if they say, hey, I want it to sound like a river flowing over rocks left and right, but upstream with fish, and it's like, okay, well, I've got, let me find that for you. Right, because the customer is always right. Absolutely, I yeah. mean, that really is it. You yeah, just... that's why I tell every young guitar player, is like, look, man, if you're going to, especially if you're going to get into session work, but it doesn't matter, session work, touring, you're in a service industry. You, yeah. you need to be able to separate yourself, create distance between you and the gig you're on, right? And, and basically make sure they're happy. That's how you continue to work, <laughs> right? And and, <laughs> you know? and I think it's almost kind of like it's sort of a great exercise in creativity to to be creative within within a box. Mm -hmm. You know, when they kind of like they know your parameters, and you still have to come up with something cool yeah. within that. That's yeah. like that's a real exercise. Yeah, there were there were times even like even like on a touring gig with Carrie, it's like you don't represent you, you represent the artist. So yeah. I was with her for 14 years and and you really with that many players in the band, you have to stay in your lane. Yeah. So my whole thing was like, man, how far in the pocket can I get with Garrett the drummer yeah. and the bass player tonight? How far how like just sick pocketed can we make right. this? And that was the thing is like so that gave us kind of our in Right. But at the same time, we were still really representing the artist and, yeah. and making sure management and everything just sounded insane out front and everyone's yeah. happy. But yeah, on a session, it's like that. Well, that's my sound, which is pretty straight ahead. But like I said, producers are going to ask for all kinds of stuff. They're going to want like a low fire. They might want your guitar to sound like a telephone. Yeah. And that's when I'd reach for the that XTS or, yeah. or whatever. It's like I've got all the tools I need to do whatever's asked of me. Right. But at the end of the day, my sound is yeah much more just kind of organic for lack of a better term. You know? Well, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, the weirdo stuff really is just to pull out when somebody needs a weirdo thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause even that, you know, I mean, that wasn't nearly as, as cool, but I, I listen to guys like, you know, Daniel and Oh God. Yeah. When he does stuff like that, it's just, or when he does the, that kind of gospel, uh, steel thing. Yeah. Oh my God. But he does those types of effects with the octavers and all the just massive. And it's just like, that sounds absolutely brilliant. So, yeah. you know, I'll go for that because I heard him do it. Right. And, yeah. and really, I mean, guys like him and Luke, they sort yeah. of invented it. You know, mm -hmm. they were like doing it. They were the first like real pedal, you know, creating these huge, mm -hmm. deep, deep signal, you know, yeah, but still, so, like really old vintage stuff. Oh and, yeah, and oh well, yeah, it is you know. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. at the time, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, Daniel and Waz still just haunts me, and honestly, so does the Edge. I, I still think he's absolutely brilliant. Oh, he's amazing. But it seems like some of the like Brian Eno and uh, and Daniel and Waz, their influence on him actually right. like brought him to another level too.